the point I'm making here is that nothing is better than a low-carbohydrate diet. Now, in fact, every study that's been done, uh, the low-carbohydrate diet almost always does better, and there are studies in which they come out equal, but uh, there are sporting events where the champion... Uh, wins if there's a draw, keeps his championship. So the the uh, nutritional establishment has, has said if it's a draw, then low fat wins. Uh, but uh, since it uh, low fat rarely wins absolutely, and low carb usually wins, uh, not a good argument. <coughs> now the, the important point is that. This is beyond weight loss. Again, this is the same population from Bolick's study. And uh, looking now at uh, triglycerides, that is uh, fat in the blood, you can see all of these guys had, uh, all but one I think, had a uh, significant drop in triglycerides. <coughs> it turns out that the guys who did best on the low-carb diet are the guys who came in with high triglycerides. Uh, they also responded, apparently, to uh, a reduction in calories altogether. Uh, but it's clear that if your patient has uh, high triglycerides, uh, this is an obvious method of treatment. This is, this is really important because this idea has been known since the 50s. Uh, and uh, you can practically determine how many carbohydrates your patient is eating by the change in their triglycerides. It's one of the most reliable, yeah. In the low-fat group, it showed that, in the low-fat diet, it showed that triglycerides also fell in many of them. Yeah. Well, uh, but it, it, is, it, is it because, or could it be because, the amount of carbohydrate they were eating before they went on this diet was significantly higher? Yeah. So it's not the fact that it's low fat. That's no. Uh, yeah. You know, in, in all of these, you don't know what the uh, uh, story is. What I can tell you, uh, anticipating the answer to that, is that if you keep people on a uh, low carbohydrate diet, such that they're not losing weight, uh, then they do better anyway. So it's it's not uh, the reduction in calories. It is also the possibility that, in, uh, as you're saying, in reducing calories, they're also de facto reducing carbs. And we have, uh, 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 don't have a slide here, but uh, uh, this is actually something that's um, easy to show. Maybe if we have time uh, this afternoon, I'll show you a slide of uh, where uh, the experimenter reported the actual level of carbohydrate and the actual level of triglycerides in a range of diets. This is the so-called A to Z study. Uh, and they studied the Ornish diet and the Atkins diet and the Learn diet. Uh, they didn't report this, but if you go and look in, in the uh, paper in the table, you can show a direct correlation between carbohydrates and triglycerides across these four diets, which had a tremendous difference in overall character. Well, let me ch charge ahead, and we'll take questions uh, towards the end. Uh, similarly for the uh, HDL, the so-called good cholesterol that went up better on a low-carb diet, uh, this is, uh, my anecdotal perception is that cardiologists tend to put uh, more stock in HDL than other people do. Uh, and you can see this, uh, not a big change from the low-fat diet. And th this is a summary of all of the uh, parameters, and the red bars are the uh, <clears throat> responses to the low-carb diet. And you can see you want the good cholesterol to go up, uh, but you uh, uh, want all the other parameters to go down. And you see again, uh, same thing. And then this just emphasizes that LDL didn't change on either of these diets. Uh, and that's considered the, the most common uh, clinical parameter that's measured, but it, the current thinking is that it's actually the small LDL uh, that are the most atherogenic. So carbohydrate restriction improves these markers.
this, this is not uh, radical. This is not a controversy. This is in textbooks, not all the textbooks. Here's a, a textbook on medical biochemistry that says the Atkins high protein diet is based on the premise of uh, uh, touch of the chase here. Keeping circulating insulin levels low, energy storage is not induced. That, that is, you, uh, you don't, because you're uh, no longer uh, inhibiting the breakdown of fat. In other words, you're uh, disinhibiting uh, the uh, effect of insulin on fat storage. And if new fat is coming in, uh, you're not storing it as well. And fatty acids released from the adipocytes and oxidation by the tissues is the consequence of that. There's no controversy. It's in some of the textbooks. Uh, not all the textbooks. So what's the problem? Well, the, um, the standard joke in academia is that there are three stages in the response to a new idea. Uh, first, people say, uh, this is wrong. And they say there's nothing new in this. And then they say, we thought of this first. So uh, <clears throat> the carbohydrate restriction is uh, maybe unique in that all three are going on at once. So uh, I'll uh, give you an example. I, I generally like to take a positive approach, showing uh, data like Volvic's data, which is very impressive. But it's worth looking at uh, some of the people who think that this is wrong. Now here's a paper called uh, Lack of Suppression of Circulating Free Fatty Acids in Hypercholesterolemia During Weight Loss on a High-Fat, Low-Carbohydrate Diet. And this has it's many authors. Uh, Robert Eckel was the former head of the uh, American Heart Association. Uh, Gary Foster did the first low-carb study, which uh, basically started what I would refer to as the first low-carb revolution. Uh, he uh, remarkably says in public that he set out to trash the Atkins diet, uh, which is not my idea of how you do an experiment, but uh, it turned out uh, that the Atkins diet was better than the low-fat diet. These people uh, represent what uh, uh, Michael Pollan calls uh, lipophobes. Uh, and uh, I, I've been trying to think of a uh, collective name for a group of lipophobes, uh, uh, maybe a fad of lipophobes. Anyway, uh, this has a lot of uh, uh, conventional nutritionists. And uh, what they say is dyslipidemia is associated with insulin resistance, high fasting triglycerides, and lower concentrations of a so it's claimed that low-carbohydrate diets have more favorable effects on metabolic abnormalities, serum triglycerides, HDL, and small dense LDL. Well, it's not claimed, it's shown. I mean, that's what the uh, Bullock study showed. Uh, that's not a claim, that's, a, that's the data. Uh, I don't mean to be too crappy about the study, but it's pretty bad. Despite these claims, little is known about the comparative effects of the diets on metabolic profiles during active weight loss. Well, not much is known if you don't read the literature. Uh, so, uh, this has been uh, their tradition. You can hardly blame them for not knowing about this. So, what does the data look like? Well, there is, in fact, a uh, uh, tremendous difference in insulin levels. The people on the high-fat diet have much lower fluctuations in insulin and lower absolute value. Now, it's true they have higher free fatty acids. Now, this is not, as it says in the title, failure to suppress uh, high fatty acids because there wasn't a high fatty acids to begin with. Uh, but subtleties of language is not their long suit. The <laughs>